Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this module, we're going to look at reinforcement learning. This is commonly used to teach neural networks to play games, such as some of the highly publicized tournaments where Google AlphaZero was able to master chess. Reinforcement learning was a part of that. We're going to take a look at the GEM, which is an open AI initiative that lets you pit your reinforcement learning techniques against actual games. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. The OpenAI Gem is part of the OpenAI project. Now we're going to make use of the OpenAI Gem for all of the reinforcement learning that we look at in this course. It's a very popular platform for reinforcement learning. If you look for other examples of using reinforcement learning with Keras and just reinforcement learning in general, you're going to see that most of them make use of the OpenAI Gem. It simulates games, in particular video games, and we're going to see how we can make use of those. Now, some things that you want to be aware of in the OpenAI Gem is there's several components to it. We're going to deal directly with Atari video games in about three parts of this course. Now, Atari video games, if you haven't dealt with Atari before, this, I was very, very young when Atari came out, and this was one of the first video games that I that I did see when I was quite young. These were very simple, blocky, pixely sort of video games. But the point is, they're simple enough that artificial intelligence can learn to play them quite well. Now, one issue though with the AI Gem Atari games is they only support Linux and Macintosh because they need to run an actual emulator in memory that's emulating Atari, which would be probably pretty difficult for Windows. So this is only supported in Linux and Macintosh. There are ways that you can get Windows to be able to do this kind of thing, and I give you some instructions here to do that. I have not tried this on, on Windows. Most of, the, most of the advanced machine learning that I do anyway, I will do on my Mac, and then I upload it to the cloud where we run it on Linux microservices. So if you're interested in machine learning, it's definitely good to get familiar with Linux and or Mac. Linux in particular is where a lot of the heavy lifting is done on these kind of things. Now, OpenAI Gem, this is all visual. You're going to see animated video games running through as we do this. So you can't use this on Google Colab because Google Colab is Jupyter Notebooks only. Now we'll see as I take you through some of the examples as we go through the next few parts that make up the reinforcement learning module, I will launch them out of Jupyter Notebooks, but they're running on my local computer and it's popping up a, a window on my local computer outside of the browser. Because of this, you just can't do this kind of thing in Google Colab. You can do parts of it, but we'll just do the whole thing. I assume that if you're doing reinforcement learning, you'll be running it on your own computer. Now, because of all these additional caveats, warnings that I'm giving you in terms of OpenAI Gem and you have to run it locally and doesn't work with, Lin with anything but Linux and Macintosh, because of this, I'm not going to assign an assignment related to reinforcement learning. It's good to to learn about it. It's a very important part of artificial intelligence and deep learning, but I'm not going to give you an actual assignment because if you're running a Windows computer, you're going to have some, you might well have some trouble with that. There is also, OpenAI Gym is a little bit Kaggle-like, except not as formal as Kaggle. So there is a leaderboard, and if you take a look at the leaderboard, you'll see that it's a GitHub repository, so it's kind of like a Kaggle on the honor system. You can submit your results using advanced training and other techniques and report what your score is. Nobody's really checking it. If you cheat, though, I'm sure other researchers who try to reproduce your research will call you out on it, so don't do that. Let's have a look at AI Gym. So AI Gym is a website. Now, you will be interacting with AI Gym not through this website. This website, it's, this is not like Google Colab where you are essentially running these things through it. These are all animations that they are giving you, showing you what these 
these games actually look like. You're not going to actually run things through here. You're going if you want to run AI Gym, you have to pip install it and run it locally on your own computer. This is all running on your computer. It'll pop open a little window that will have things that look just like that. So that's Space Invaders. That's a very classic Atari video game. Let's go ahead and look at the environments. So in reinforcement training, the environment is essentially the universe that you're acting on. It's the game. And you need ways to pull and find out what is going on in your environment. And you're given information about what the environment currently looks like. And there's three main ways that they deal with this in AI Gem. You might be given essentially a position, so a vector, a position and a velocity, just a couple of numbers that describe like the mountain cart, which we'll use for several of the examples in this course. You're essentially given a position, so the X location of this cart and the velocity. And you're able with, we'll learn classic Q learning, kind of reinforcement learning separate from AI and from deep neural networks and then we'll learn how to use deep reinforcement learning and use deep neural networks and curas to really make some advanced agents we'll see how we can teach it to play breakout which is one of the atari games these are not atari games you could probably run these all on windows just fine they're pretty simple windows should be able to handle that and where you might not be able to run some of these is these are the main categories that you have here the atari ones are really cool we will be using those those don't work on windows without very special instructions like I gave you access to. Box2D is a physics. So Box2D, what's very cool about it is it's a physics engine. So you can incorporate physics into things. So you see how these things fall very realistically. That is a very useful application of, of Box2D. And Box2D is an external library that you can pull into these. I haven't done much with the Box 2D ones. I'm not sure if that, I suspect that works pretty well on Windows. I think Atari is the main issue. Uh, Mujo Co, that's a physics engine that you have to pay for. And then there's also robotic school ones where you're teaching robots to walk and to dance and to do all kinds of fun things. Atari is the one that we will deal with because this is pretty cool. You're actually receiving input from these. Now for, for Atari games, usually you're not getting a vector of, say, things, positions and velocities and that, you actually get the image of the screen. So you get a picture of what the video game truly sees. And I mean, that is cool because you're seeing what the human player's eyes would have seen. So convolution networks reign supreme here, obviously. We will work with a game, and there's quite a few games here. We're going to work with this one here called Breakout. We'll see that using a deep convolution neural network and reinforcement learning, it'll learn very quickly to move that little paddle so that the ball actually bounces off of it and goes up here and breaks completely through the barrier in many cases, but doing much better than this random agent here. It's just it's just moving rand randomly. Very rarely does it actually hit the thing and bounce it back up. But that's the idea of this game. You're it's kind of like racquetball. You're trying to paddle that ball right back up at that the barrier up there and basically break through it. Now another very interesting thing is there's a whole another class of games in Atari where you're not getting an image of it, you're actually getting the contents of the RAM that are in the Atari system. It's only 128 bytes of memory typically. These are these are old school games. And you will then use the actual memory of the game to see how well you can play. Because in this breakout game, it's probably storing the X and Y coordinates of the ball, of the little slider moving back and forth, how much of the wall remains. So there's, in the video game memory itself, there is probably a lot of data that you can use as input to your neural network so that it'll know what to do. Now, if you're truly dumping the memory in here, if there's anything unrevealed to the player, so if in the memory, like maybe in this boxing game, believe it or not, those are actually people punching at each other. That is some of the worst graphics I have ever seen. But maybe there's some strategy that the computer player has that's stored in memory. Well, you're, if you do use the input Input of the game, if you do use the memory of the game for input, then it's going to cheat. It's going to use whatever is in that memory to, to play it, to beat it. 
So if you say you had a card game and on the screen was just the dealer's two cards, but you couldn't see what they were, maybe you were playing blackjack or poker, if those cards were stored in the memory of the computer of Atari, which they likely were, then you're, if you're using the computer memory and not the screen as your input, then you have to realize it might cheat. Now, I can't change the memory, but it can, it can look at it and use that as input to know what to do. So we'll start in the next parts with looking at simply reinforcement learning by itself, and then we'll get further and see how to use deep learning and ultimately learn how to create a game, learn how to create a neural network that can play breakout. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to look at Q-learning and how to pit that against the gym. This content changes often, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on this course and other topics in artificial intelligence.